minister and minister is of a servant of God. Amen. After giving some thought to my introduction, I said to someone that I know our speaker, that knows our speaker better than what I do. I asked him, and this is what he shared with me. I put my spirit within him, and he fought, will walk in my stature, keep my judgment and do them. I gave him a charge. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ to preach. I anointed him to preach the tidings unto the meek. I sent him to mend up the broken heart, preach deliverance to the captain. Our spirit was given the resources to help him to be committed to his charge. He is willing to suffer, fight the good fight of faith, persevere, conquer, be victorious, defend the gospel, and stand firm. Our spirit is the assistant pastor of Remote Correct me on the Johnson. <laughs> Church of Pittsburgh. He is not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. The assistant pastor will preach the word in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. Our speaker, Elder Tyler Anthony Walker, knows whose spirit he has been put within him, who gave him the charge, and who anointed him. Amen. Amen. Elder Walker does not have the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. After the Sabbath selection, Yuri, Yuri, Elder Tower Anthony Walker. Amen. Amen. I have one message intended to preach on this morning. Mm -hmm. And I was going over that message and I said, that was really good. And I haven't really preached it a whole lot. And, and it was talking about our king, who is Jesus. Yes. And I was asleep on Saturday morning, or better yet, I had a dream. And in the dream, it was some good church going on in and the preacher was preaching, and then I woke up. And then I said, oh, well, I'm not preaching that on Sunday. Uh -huh. And I went to go back to sleep, and the Lord said these words to me, can they live again? Oh, all right. All right. And I woke back up, and, and I tried to shake it, and I tried to go to sleep again. I said, that's not my message. And the Lord spoke again and said, can they live again? And then I said, all right, Lord, I hear you talking now, so let me go ahead and roll over and start writing down my phone, which is what you say, and writing down these thoughts, because apparently you have changed my message from what I was going to preach, but that's what how God works. It's not always our agenda. Amen. Amen. But we must know how to follow his <laughs> The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, there were very, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and said unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And have a seat. Amen. Amen. That's what I tell them. It's time, time to live. Amen. Look at somebody says, time to live. Time to live. You say, well, I am living, but there are people that are living, walking among us who are very much dead. Amen. They're Amen. dead spiritually. Even though they're walking and have the activity of their limbs and all of these things, but yet they're dead on the inside. Amen. And then, we have our own things that go, even with Christians, sometimes we can become a little dry and up out of the mm -hmm. And that's a place that we should never want to be in, is a dried up place. Mm -hmm. But just to give you a little bit on Ezekiel, Ezekiel reminds us to see our own in those dark times when we live in us, to examine our own lives and to align ourselves with the, tr the one true God. Yes, yes. And Ezekiel, 
was a was one who was exiled in Babylon, and his presence with his people has nothing to do with geographic location. It's about the condition of their hearts. And then some more about Ezekiel. God, it says that Ezekiel, whose name means stricken by God, grew up in Jerusalem, where he trained to be a priest in the temple. Yeah. He was among the second group of captives taken to Babylon, along with King Je Jehoshaphat, about 597 B.C. While in Babylon, Ezekiel became a prophet of God. He is the author of the Old Testament book that bears his name. Yeah. Ezekiel's ministry began with condemnation and judgment of the nation Judah and the destruction of Jerusalem. Ezekiel's prophecies speak of hope for the future. Ezekiel wanted to help the people learn from their failures. He announced impending judgment upon the nations that surrounded Judah and reestablished hope for the restoration of Israel. His vision of the Valley of Dry Bones pictures new life being breathed into the nation. And that prophecy will be ultimately fulfilled in the millennial reign of Christ on earth. So therefore, he, would, he gave out judgment of what was to come. And even today, you have prophets that are among. Not everybody who says I'm a prophet is a prophet. Exactly. Right. Oftentimes I say, if you have to always get up and say, if I be a prophet of God, then you must not be. Because right. 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 you don't have to make yourself known by right. of who you are, because right. it will be known right. who you are. Right. Just live your life and speak the word. Yeah. Right. And then on top of that, I don't know, I don't need to always hear a, a prophecy of Money's coming your way. If you like this, if your money's coming, I don't, I don't need to hear about those prophecies all the time. Right. Tell me the truth of what's going to happen. Yeah. Tell me to buy myself so I can get myself together. Yeah. Because I don't want to be lost and end up in the devil's head. Yeah. But see, people don't want prophets that come and tell you the truth. Yeah. If you continue in the way that you're going, I see destruction coming for you. Yeah. They don't like those prophets. They don't like prophets who tell you about you continue this way or that way, or if you do this, then God will bless you in this way. But they want to hear about money, fame, and fortune, and that's not what I'm about. That's not what I'm seeking out. And then there are some of the people who even look at these things, but then they try to attach God to them. They say, if I can only just find the secret to happiness and, and wealth, if I can just gain the wealth, but I've read in the word where it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Therefore, I don't know. That's that's one reason. That's one problem that people have who are seeking after all this other stuff. Yeah. They looking for money yeah. above God. Oh, they looking for recognition of themselves Fun. above God. That's right. They want all of these things for themselves instead of seeking Him first. Yeah. But as I said, they don't like it when the prophet comes and tells them the truth. Well, he can deliver God's message with straightforward language yes, yes. that everyone could understand. Whether they listen or not. Listen or not. And that's the way it is still today. Mm -hmm. Preachers who are preaching a straightforward message. Yeah. Preaching holiness and truth and righteousness. Yeah. Some are listening, but there's many who are not listening. Yeah. Because it's not popular to them. That's yeah. not what they want to hear. They want to hear stuff that's going to allow them to feel comfortable in their skin. Feel comfortable in the way that they're living their life. Even though it's not pleasing to God. want to hear. Mm -hmm. They shot down the preachers who talk about, oh, if you just be happy and, and good vibes and good energy and all of these things, then that's all you need. And just look for those who are like you and, and like-minded. But there are a lot of people who can be like-minded like you and still don't serve God. Yeah. Yeah. Burning their saying yeah. and doing all of their other things that are not of God. Yeah. And don't even realize that they're conjuring up spirits and everything that's not of God. Think about it. Ezekiel himself was an 
called to be a watchman. Yeah. And God warned him that if he did not faithfully warn him of punishment for not following God, he would be held accountable for the blood of those who died in their sin. And pastors are responsible for the flock. They're responsible for what happens in their church. They're responsible for who they let teach Sunday school. They're responsible for who they let lead the youth group. You can't have somebody leading the youth group and they out there living all kinds of manner of sin. And you claim to lead the young people. You can't have somebody teach a Sunday school and they're living a lifestyle of homosexuality, but they're trying to tell you the truth of God. Hey! 
Yes, Lord. So yes, you Lord. see the faith is tiny. Amen. We cannot be dried up. We should never want to be dried up. Because see, people don't respect God's house like they used to. Amen. Even the people that come in his house don't respect it like they used to. Yes. But he wants to know, can my church live again? Yes, again. And it's time for us to live. Hallelujah. We don't know how much longer we have. I'm not worried about how much longer we have. But what I'm worried about is making sure that your soul is ready yes. to live beyond the blue. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ezekiel gave hope. Yes. That's all I'm here to tell you is, is trying to give you hope. Yes. Don't look at what our world is going through. Yes. I don't care how much worse it gets. Don't let it get to you. Because see, the enemy wants you to be distracted. Yes. Yes. But Jesus said, all of these things are going to happen, but behold, the end is not yet. Amen. Jesus wants you to remain focused on him. Yes. I don't care what happens. We, 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 look, we know we want to pray for the protection of Israel, but regardless of what happened in Israel, it has to happen. Yes. Regardless of what happens in Ukraine, regardless of another World War III comes up, or whatever, it has to happen. Because Jesus said these things. But know that we shall live. Even if destruction should come to our land, these United States soil, God still knows how to make his people live in the midst of destruction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great God.